Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to the shop. We are going to be doing another live and this week is going to be an exceptionally fun one because we are doing one of my favorites. This is the Cove and Pin Dovetail Joint. And uh, where did I put it? Oh, put it here. <laughs> I'm going to show you this a little bit closer. This joint is, uh, there's actually a little bit of history to this joint. It is one of the first ever power tool joints. And this was designed so that you would have a router that would run around and would leave these pins and then you would have the router doing it on the pin side so the two pieces would come together. It was originally designed shortly after World War, uh, shortly after the Civil War. And for about 20, 30 years you find this in a lot of furniture because it was very quick and easy. Someone could actually go from making uh, 20 drawers a day to doing over 200 drawers a day because of the power tool revolution. And this was, uh, it's actually a good way of dating furniture, is that you'll see these on the side. It's also known as is a, um, oh man, total mind blank, nap, K-N-A-P-P, -P, the nap joint, uh, because uh, Charles Knapp, Chris Knapp, something like that, um, he, <laughs> he patented this joint, uh, actually did it in Waterloo, Wisconsin, just a little bit north of me here. And uh, so this is, that was um, kind of a cool thing. But then they figured out how to do traditional dovetails with the power tool and this disappeared suddenly. Uh, so by the turn of the century, this joint was basically gone. So if you find an old dresser that has this joint in it, you know it was probably made between the Civil War and the turn of the century. Just a, a good way of dating things. And it looks really cool. The problem with it is it's designed for power tools and it's really almost impossible to do it with hand tools but we're gonna do this today. <laughs> so we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this. Now, if you're new to Wood Vibrate Live, um, we're doing this live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. And if you're watching this not live, you can go down in the description below and you'll see all of the questions listed out with timestamps beside them. So you can click on the timestamp and jump roughly to that area in the video and answer those questions. But we're gonna try and do this all in one hour. I, I, yeah, I'm holding my breath on that, <laughs> but... Um, my practice test on this one was uh, 38 minutes and I made a few problems on that. So I think we're doing pretty good, but we'll find out. This is one of those things that could go really well or could go really, really poorly. So we're gonna have a bit of fun with that. Uh, before that, I have a few announcements. Um, a few things coming up. Actually, I'm gonna be at the Peach Meet down in Georgia. This is a Midwest tool collectors meet and it is the biggest tool sale by far in all of the South. Um, and it will be in uh, Madison, Georgia, and that'll be on the 1st and 2nd of February. Um, so I'll be actually flying down for that. You have to be a member of the Midwest Tool Collectors um, to, to be invited to it, um, and then you can uh, go to the meet and purchase tools, but it is a huge thing for that. Um, then also I'll be at a tool meet in February up in St. Francis, Wisconsin. Um, the tool meet here, just a couple miles away from me in Loves Park, Illinois. Uh, and then I will be in UK for Makers Central in May, May 11th. Um, so if any of you are in Europe and planning on going to Makers Central, um, uh, we'll uh, get to see you there. Oh, and I wanted to show you this. I, actually, you're probably seeing it on the bench here wondering what this is. Um, this is actually the tray that I got. And I want to make a few of these uh, for buffing compound and see if anyone wants them. Um, so if you're interested in buying um, carbonite buffing compound, let me know. <laughs> I'm playing with it because I, I'm mixing the I'm mixing the carbonite, um, I'm mixing the buffing compound um, that I sell with the strops. Um, so I thought I'd do something a little different. I'm going to try and do some with my logos and make my own mold for them. But uh, fun things coming up. Enough talking. Let's actually get into uh, building this joint. And I'm going to be working with walnut and white oak. I know white oak. Surprise, surprise. Um, we're going to be working through this now. One of the problems is in order to do this with hand tools you have to make a mark on one board and make the mark on the second board in the exact same location, but you can't put one on top of the other and trace them because there's a board in the way. So what we're gonna do is design it on one board and put it on the other one and drill our holes straight down through one and then through the other. And it'll make a little bit more sense here in a minute, but let's actually start doing some of the layout lines on this. So let me switch it over here to this camera. Any questions while I'm setting this up? Did anyone guess the uh, song going through my head? No one's going to guess that one. It's a wild one. No, I don't know if it's all that wild, but... I was going to say, not... I can give them a hint. No, no hints. But I, I would be shocked. I wasn't expecting anyone to get last week's either, so... Oh, well. oh no, i got to figure that out. Okay. Um, so we got to actually tap this up into place. I want it to be flush with 
the bottom of the bench. Um, and what we're going to do is draw our line straight off of that. So I'm going to take this other board, and we want this end of it, and I'm going to put it on there. Oh, there is a question. I'm sorry. What's that? When you, it's not related to Oh, let me just get into this yeah. then. Um, so this is basically a half blind dovetail. So on this side here, uh, we actually have this, this chunk here, the face board, that we want to leave alone. So there's a distance from the face here to the pin. We want to actually set that up on here and put whatever that distance is on this board. And so I'm just going to draw a line randomly here. Now normally I would, I would put that on the marking gauge ahead of time, but it really doesn't matter because this isn't actually going into a drawer. I'm just doing it for demonstration sake. So I'll put that on there. I'm going to line up this board with that line. And I'm going to stick a hold fast on here and lock this thing down in place. And so now we have these two boards locked in place as they would be in the actual joint. We just need to actually draw out this shape on top of it. And for that, I actually have this uh, um, set of circles. Um, I picked this one up, I don't know when, um, but you can buy these online or at most any craft store. And they have, this one has circles from inch and seven eighths all the way down to one sixteenth of an inch. Uh, I'm going to be using a three quarter inch circle. Uh, picking the size, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, because this is hand cut, and this is one of the things you'll, you'll see, I have this actual piece on the side here and a piece on the side here. The machine cut ones don't actually have an edge to that. There would be another scallop that would be rounded off here, another scallop that would be rounded off here, and sometimes you'd actually see the cut of the plate going through the pin. Um, and so the the machine would just make this continuously up and down, but in this case we can actually start and stop it at one point or the other. Uh, let's see, the next thing I need to do is patch. <laughs> Excuse me. Woo, she sneezed. <laughs> I need to draw a line through the middle of all of these circles. Now because they're three quarters of an inch that I'm choosing, uh, that line needs to be in uh, uh, three eighths of an inch. Wow, total mind blank there. So I'm going to set this up to 3 eighths of an inch, put that on there, and I'm just going to draw a line lightly across the top here. And that line will be the center of our circles. Now we need to figure out where to put the circles in the actual design. And so I'm going to pick a spot that looks like about middle. That looks like about middle. I'm going to put the pin in there, lock this down, turn it around and see how close I am to middle. I'm off by about a, uh, less than a sixteenth of an inch. So then I can put this pin right in between those two dots. Slide the fence over against. And now I have a middle point for the middle circle. Now we need to create other circles off of that. But before we do that, I'm going to actually take this stencil and draw out on here the, where's my three quarter? There's my three quarter. Uh, the three quarter inch circle. Actually, I'm going to back it off just a little bit right there. And so I'm going to draw on here the 3 quarter inch. Um, and then I'm going to move that over. So we have the first 3 quarter inch. I'm going to slide this over until we intersect with the second uh, 3 quarter inch circle. Draw that on here. And then do the same thing over here. Uh, the only thing is I want to find out where the center point of this is. So I have the center line here and then I'm going to draw this, because I have these center lines on the pattern here, I can draw those across. And let me actually grab my awl. Got a question while I'm fiddling with this? Oh, uh, well, okay, hang on. <coughs> I love catching her off guard. Let's what see. I want to try and try to figure out who asked the question. Oh, Jay Stu asked the question, what kind of journal is that? Your journal that you... I have no idea. It's a journal I've had for years. Black. Is it black? Yeah. Journal on the front, and it just has a bunch of lined pages that are blank. Yeah, it was a gift I was given yeah. like five years ago. I still use it. <laughs> cool. So now I have my three center points for these three three quarter inch circles. The next thing I need to do is I want to actually drill a pilot hole all the way through this. And I want to explain a little bit about what the pilot hole is. Uh, there are a couple different reasons for this. I'm going to draw, I think this is a 1 8 inch bit, something around that. Um, I'm going to drill this through one board and then all the way down through the next board. 
And this will then give me a perfect location from one board onto the other, so that the center of the circle is in the exact same location on the two boards. The other thing that this does is it helps the lead screw cut into the hole. The lead screw on the bigger augers uh, is going to have a little bit of trouble because we're going to be cutting into end grain of the board. So the board that's standing up, we're going to be drilling into that end grain. Uh, and if that board isn't properly supported, that lead screw will make the board want to split. And so creating that pilot hole will actually allow the drill bit to work faster and more efficiently, as well as not forcing, not trying to make the wood split. So we're going to drill a pilot hole on those three marks, run those in vertically here, and I'll let you see it from this angle and switch it over to the next one. And I'm going to put these pretty darn deep. You got to go down a ways. And this is an egg beater drill that I restored about three years ago. And I still use it. It's my favorite one. Got any questions? This is going to take a little bit. Um, no, they're still trying to figure out what song. <laughs> I even think they're not, no. Not even close. <laughs> yeah, there's probably only one person in the world who would guess the song, and she's the one behind the chat. Uh, so there's one hole. There would be maybe one other one. <sighs> maybe. Maybe. That's a, a, a far shot. I'm just eyeballing vertical because it doesn't need to be perfectly vertical and the eyeball is actually pretty accurate. So I go down a little ways, clean it out. Accurate. Once I get down into the end grain, it goes a little faster. A little more. Someone guessing wildly? <laughs> uh, that was in my head earlier because uh, one of the people brought it up at the gym today because Emma was there. Oh. At least it's not the finger song. Oh, that's the only thing worse than, than Baby Shark. Oh. <laughs> one more and we should be through. So now, theoretically, we don't need to draw any other circles. Because we have the center point set up, we are ready to then start drilling out. The only other thing I want to do, before I go any farther, is find my marking knife. Oh no, it's over there. Just a moment here. I can blame my kids for this one. I don't know why they're stuck on uh, Disney for some reason. No, it's not Disney. It's not Disney. It's not, it's not a kid's song. <laughs> Okay, let me move this over. Show you this a little bit closer. And switch back. So I don't have to do this camera switching when I'm doing a, a test one. What I want to do is mark the edge of this board on here. Uh, just so I know, basically this is my depth of cut mark. Do that on here. And do that on here. So next we are going to make the uh, pin board. Yes, I'm going to do pins first on this. I know. Pins first, not tails first. No questions on flipping over? Nope, we're still guessing song. <laughs> <laughs> now what I want to do is I'm going to use a three-quarter inch drill bit here to cut that hole. The problem is that bit is going to go over the edge a little ways. And if I leave it by itself, I could drop it on the floor. <laughs> If I leave it by itself, the circle is going gonna, gonna to come out onto this side here, and that might cause um, pieces over here to split off. So I'm actually going to support the back of this with another scrap of wood. So back this up. Boy, I'm dropping everything on the floor today. Okay, I'm going to give five more minutes and I'll tell you what's on my brain. Three letter hint? Oh no, I guess it's for us. It might not be in other countries. Fine. One hint. Masterpiece. What? Masterpiece. Three letter? PBS. Oh. I don't know what that would do, but okay. Masterpiece theater. <laughs> okay, um, 
So if now they I don't get to... masterpiece, they're not gonna guess the song. No. I mean that's the best hint I can get. Move this out a little ways, sorry. Go up a little bit. There you go. Genre. All right, so now we want to drill these out. Now that we have those pilot holes, everything runs nicely, smoothly on down. And I have this flag on here already to tell me how deep to cut. And this flag is set up to be the thickness of this board. So from the flag to the cutting edge of this is the same thickness of that. Actually, it's off by a little bit, so I'm going to just stop a little bit short. That's fine. I want to stop a little bit short so I can come back and chisel it out. We're going to drill down three of these. Yay, end grain. Normally my kids would be covering their ears thinking that's loud in the shop. Oh, poop. So we just ran into our first problem. I'm using a scrap piece of wood that split out. Uh... So, now i got to figure out what I want to do here. Uh, let's see. This is what I get for using the cheap scrap here. Work down on the other side. I think I'm going to clean it out, clamp it up, and redrill. Oh, I don't know if I can redrill that. I'll make it work. It's going to take a little more time, but I think I'll make it work here. So sometimes when you run into problems, uh, it is a chance to grow. Is a chance to learn, a chance to try new things, and usually it's a great way to throw in a butterfly <laughs> or some other way to fix a joint. So, now let's see if I can clamp this back together. Don't think I will be able to clamp it all the way back together, but we'll see what happens when I grab my C clamps are missing. I want to know what the show is. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, let's just keep going. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Where are all my C clamps? That must be exactly what I want to squeeze it up. Let's see if I can break it apart and reglue it. There we go. Oh, yeah, there's the reason why I can't come back together. Too many fibers that split out from the drill. Question for you. Sure, what's that? This is going to take a minute to fix up. Uh, Stephen Price, um, can you keep the piece clamps on its sides while drilling? Can you keep the piece clamps? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, well, I'm assuming you're, you're talking about clamping the board this way as well as this way while drilling, and that would have been smart, uh, especially since I'm using cheap scrap wood that I have left over. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll do that here. In, well, that's going to be a fun one to clean up. I'll loosen up. I am going to glue this up really darn quick like here. So let's use some CA glue. And I know a lot of people have a problem with using cyanoacrylate or super glues in the wood shop, thinking, oh, those aren't real, those aren't real glues. Um, they do actually work really well, and I did it in my most recent glue test, uh, showing that they are viable strong glues. Are they a total joinery, the only glue you need? No. Uh, but uh, they do actually work really well. So I'm going to use some thick CA, and they're great for fixing things. Um, anytime you've busted something up, use some thick CA on... Can, like, zoom in yeah, I'll move over here in a minute. Move this camera over to this one. Good dance moves to go with it. What's that? No. Does your song have good dance moves to go with it? No. I say no. Oh, yeah, I think I'm going to give it up. Wait, what right? Shots me. No. Yeah, let me finish gluing this and then I'll tell you the song. Think so. historical. Oh, now you gave it. It's BBC. Half of everything is historical. Okay, there we go. So the, the song I have running through my head is uh, Victoria's uh, theme song. And glory, glory, hallelujah. He's excited because it comes out on Sunday. Yes, I'm so looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm a...
Okay, and then I'm also going to use some thin CA. And this will allow me to seep into the outsides here. I have a question for you. Okay. What's that? Uh, you can buy it on Amazon, actually. Uh, if you go to my glue test video, I have a link to it on there on this specific setup. But it's 2P10, and it comes with five, uh, four different, uh, four different CA glues, and an accelerator, and a cleaner, and a bunch of other things. And I love it. Um, I use it all the time when I bust out a piece and want to glue it back on, like this. So now we can get back to the plan. And it's going to be a bit of a pain to work on this piece now. But nevertheless, as Roy Underhill would say, we will keep going. There. Now we're right back to where we were before, right? So let's put this back in here. Let's clamp this down, and then I'm going to put this across here to hold these in together in case there's any other split outs. And now let's actually try and drill this. Now here's a, a fun one. Anytime you're working with an auger, uh, trying to drill out this hole because this hole right now is a cone. It's the right size at the top, but the wrong size at the bottom. And so I'm going to try and get this started in here. Just take it slowly. And I think I just rebroke the joint. I was gonna say, it looks like you're wiggling quite a bit. But as long as I can get it round, then I can clean it out later. Yeah, I think I can work with that. There, we've saved the joint. Now we can go on and drill the other two. Any other questions? See if I can do it without splitting this one out again. Well. Boy, I picked the wrong board, didn't I? <laughs> Oak is really cool for this joint to see the end grain on it. And it will be useful at the end. I will show you something with oak that doesn't show up in other woods. Um, but for right now, it's going to be a slight issue. Who needs a power tool? <laughs> OK, put that over here. And the bench gets really clogged because there are so many tools here that it is, in order to make this happen, I've got like five gouges and chisels and two different saws and three different squares and we haven't even gotten into the front of this joint yet. So there, we're done with that piece. Set this aside. Now we want to clean these up so that we can set this on here. Now I want to grab the marking gauge and set it specifically to the thickness of this other board. Really careful like. There we go. And now that I have the marking gauge to the thickness of the board, I want to come in here and actually mark the, the actual depth stop, which is going to be yeah, I went a bit too deep on that middle one. Right there. Now we can come in and start doing all of the chisel work to prep this. And where is my little square? There's my little so square. How far would you say in this project first? How far what? How far would you say you're in? Someone just joined us, so. I'm about a quarter of the way into it. Okay. And if you need to go back and check it later, once the video goes live, this will be... Uh, will be uploaded later. So I'm going to draw from the side of the circle out. And that is what I need to chisel out. Right there. And right there. So I'm going to grab my chisel. 
I'm gonna start in here. I don't want to go right into that depth line. Let me move this over a little bit so you can see better. There we go. That's a little better. I don't want to go right into that uh, that depth of cut line. I want to come up an eighth inch or so. And because this wood is so old or so, um, it's the the scraps left over from the air drying process. And I'm going to come in from here, get nice and flat all the way across there. And the only thing that matters in this is the outside scalloped edge. Everything else is schmoo. Nothing else really matters. And now I want to start singing Behind the Rhapsody. <laughs> Nothing really matters. Nothing really matters. And onto this one. Granddad's Forge wants to know if you have an affiliate link for that glue. Um, I do, but not on here. If you go to the uh, glue test page, the glue test video, it's on there. Um, are you looking it up? Uh, I can. Oh. No, I wasn't sure if you were, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, I'd have to go look it up and pull it up for that. But it's like, uh, I think, 30 bucks for that whole set of glue, so it's a, it's a pretty decent deal. At least it was. You never know with Amazon because they're always changing the price. I'm going to trim this one back a little bit more. And this joint here, however uh, much of a point you want these to come to, you can decide yourself. And here's the point, uh, the first place where I want to pull out a gouge. And I have a gouge that's set up to the same diameter as these circles. And I'm going to clean them up a little bit. Just go around them and actually undercut them a little bit. Okay. Not much, just a little bit. So you said it was 2P10, was it thick, thin gel? Thin it's, it's, it's a 2P10 kit. 2P10 kit. Yes. What are you looking at? I was looking at your glue test thing. I don't see 2P10 kit. Oh, no, I think I just had individuals in there because I tested them each individually. Yeah, if you go to Amazon.com and search for 2P10 kit, you'll find it on there. Otherwise, if you're watching this uh, not live, it's now down in the description because I put it in later. <laughs> so I want to come in here and I'm going to use the corner of the chisel to actually work back in there from both sides and just create a bit of a stop cut. <laughs> Pulling all these out. Just cleaning up. We're going to do some more detail here in the future. But I just want it to look somewhat nice. As we get a little closer to it. Not just sawdust says somehow with all the beautiful tools on display, you can't get used to all the plastic clamps. Yeah. <laughs> Well, usually for that type of joint, I would use my uh, my C clamps, my steel C clamps, because they work really well for that, applying a lot of pressure. But I don't know where they're at right now. That and all my wood clamps. Oh, that's right, they're all in use because I'm gluing up the flywheel for oh. the scroll saw. Oh, they probably have the same. So that is about it for the tails board. Or excuse me, the pins board. Yes, this is the pins, not the tails. Um, now, normally, if you were to make this with a power tool, the router would have gone through and you'd still have this pin sticking up in the middle of each of these. And so it would look something like like this right now with one of the, in each of those places. But because we're not doing it with a router and going around, we're going to be putting these dowel pins in a little later. Um, so now we need to shape this to look like that. Um, and there's where the problems come out. So the next thing I want to do is actually set up on here, and I'm going to set this marking gauge up to the thickness of this wall here. And I'm going to bring this over here, and I'm going to set this marking gauge on this, set my line on here, and draw that same line here. 
That way I know how far down to cut that. Then I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to check and make sure that the wall thickness on this side is the same. It's, it's close enough. And I can continue that line over here. And so that's going to tell me how far down to cut that way. Now the next thing we know is how far down to cut this way. And that's why we cut that little nick here so we can draw a line on that. So let me switch over for a moment and reposition. Are there any questions while I'm moving things around? Um, no. Wow, it's kind of a quiet group. No questions tonight? We got some different colors on tonight. It's kind of cool. Nice. And we're missing the regulars, so. I like having different things. Welcome. <laughs> so, yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them at me. Um, don't always have it, but uh, we'll put them in here as we go. We usually try to answer all the questions. We usually come pretty close. So, let's put this in here. There we go. Focus on. Camera two. So now I have that nick that I put on there earlier. I'm going to put the knife line into that nick, put this across here, and draw my line across the top. And that is where I need to cut down. I need to cut down to that line that I just put on with a marking gauge. So I'm going to grab my dovetail saw, and very carefully cut on that line down to the other line. regular dovetails, um, you do this second. Actually, I'm going to put that marking gauge line on the back side too, just so I see the depth mark there. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so we're in the effort. Just made this comment. Put this over and do the same thing on this side. What's that? Okay, your bench close-up shots are very anti-ASMR, clanging away. What does that mean? ASMR. I don't know. I don't know if it's too close or you're making too much noise. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm using the same microphone for both cameras, so the microphone is actually on me. If that's too loud, let me know. Yes, all the microphones are right here, so I could do this and have a really good conversation with you guys. Hi. How are you? <laughs> okay, uh, do the same thing on this side. And cut down that mark that I didn't put on that side. Oh, it's a bad joke. It's a what? Ah, he said bad joke. Oh. I don't, I mean... <laughs> Are you doing bad Are jokes in my wife's here? Video. Oh. Oh. <laughs> she got it? <laughs> cool. And now we can cut, like, this is what feels like regular tails it's hard cut. hard to hear me tonight. Yeah, your microphone might be turned down a little bit. It's the farthest one to the left. So the next thing I want to do is actually lay out lines on here to cut down. And these lines don't really matter that much because I'm going to be carving around them later. But I'm going to be putting a line here on the outside. Well, actually, I could use this marking gauge here that I just put on the two sides. I'll make a mark from there. And make a mark from there. And then I need to put in two other lines that correspond with the middles of these. So I'm going to put one here, and I'm going to put one here. And these are just going to be relief cuts that go down in between each of the wheels. And so we want to cut down all four of these. And from all the way down to this point, it really doesn't matter. But the rest of this cut down is actually going to show off. This is actually the side of the pin, or tail, excuse me. That? What's that? Okay. Um, I just have a couple questions. What's that? Uh, maybe. Um, I, I actually was thinking that the other day and wondering if that would actually work. Um, a little bit. But I don't have a plug cutter and I don't have a drill press to do it on. Um, and that wouldn't work very well on the, on the post drill due to how slow it runs. 
Um, so, yeah, it might. Who knows? I, I don't. <laughs> On those two shoulders and cheeks that I just cut, I'm going to come into the chisel and clean those out just a little bit. Because the saw never quite makes the corner all the way. Switch back over to this. Oop, there's a cable in the way. There we go. Sorry about that. Focus. Focus. There we go. So I want to clean these up just a little bit. Yeah, worth the effort. I saw you just started putting up some more videos again. Nice work, man. If you haven't seen Worth the Effort's channel, you've got to go check him out. Uh, it's actually one of the reasons why I am here today. So, thank you. So now we're going to cut down just a little ways until I get close to the lines. I'm, this is just a relief cut that will make it easier to chisel out in a little bit. Just down close to those lines. And that's all we need the saw for. Now we need to actually chisel these into rounds. And this is where things really get kind of funky because from here on out, we're basically carving. Uh, there isn't a great way of making them. Yes, you can bring in a saw and shape them out a little ways. Yes, you can take a file or rasp. Uh, but if you have a gouge, there really isn't a faster way to do it than just taking a gouge and cleaning it out. So I want to show you that. So I'm just setting up the cameras a little bit better here for you. As this is something I want to show off a bit. There we go. So the next thing I want to do is come in here and just nick the corners off. And just grab a mallet and tap down quickly. Take them off at a 45, still stay away from the line in good ways. And you can start to see how the shape comes out. From here, there really isn't a lot of material to move. So are you trying to be in a wide out camera, or did you want to be... Closer? Oh, did I not switch over to that one? Sorry. There, is that better? Yeah. So I'm just going to be slicing down to this. You guys have far more fun in that chat than I have over here, I'm guessing. Someone was just slamming your crossfitting. <laughs> <laughs> That's not too hard to do. It's been a long time. So now that I have that on there, I'm going to come into the chisel and I'm going to carve these out. And it's going to be a little hard because normally I stand where the camera's at. So I want to just pare them down. No pressure, it's not like anyone's watching. Yeah. <laughs> and also, because I drew these lines on the inside of the circle, I want to make sure that that line stays there. I don't want to touch the line, which I don't know if you guys can see because it's just a pencil line. So once I get those. And the outside edge here is what matters. The edge down below really doesn't matter that much. So if I undercut it a little bit, so if I slice it back a little bit more on this side, it's not going to make that much of a difference. And we're going to be doing some fitting up a little bit here. This is just to get things fairly close. Now I found one of the hardest points is actually back in these corners in between the two wheels. I'm just trying to take off too much there. There I go again, trying to speed up. Speed is downfall to a lot of hand tool work. That's where 90% of my problems come from is I just try to go a little too fast. Try to take off too big a chunk. I love these little curls. Something about ingrained walnut curls that are making me hungry. It's not the restricted calorie diet now, right now. No, no, it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. Oh, I sliced my finger at some point. There's blood. I always love it. You know, you have a sharp tool when you don't know you cut yourself, but you're 
We're bleeding. Okay. You can see I'm leaving this stuff in between. I'm going to show you that here in a minute. Any questions on this? There were. Hang on. Uh, la, 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 la. I think it was. Oh, yeah. Joe P. asked, what is this joint used for typically? I think he joined us later then. This is basically a dovetail joint. So drawers. Um, and uh, for getting into or uh, joining two boards at 90 degrees. Now here's where I'm actually going to bring in my dovetail chisel because it has such a fine point here in the corner. It allows me to get that corner all the way back in there and I can clean these out. These black walnut paleo. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it's actually one of my weird hobbies is that I have a hobby of trying diets and different ways of losing weight. Yeah, I don't know why, but I'd rather enjoy it. I like the study. Okay, so I think we've gotten it pretty darn close. Let's loosen this up and give it our first test fit. What's our time? 41. I think we're doing pretty good. We're going to be really, really close on time. We're probably going to go a little bit longer today. But that's okay. I think we can get this whole board in. The next thing I want to do is put these two boards together and, oh no, they don't fit. Surprise, surprise. So now we have the idea of, do we adjust the tails board? Do we adjust the uh -huh. pins board or the tails board? Camera. Oh, sorry. Oop. I was like, you're waving blocks, but they can't see it. <laughs> so now we have the question of, do we adjust the, the pins board or we adjust the tails board? And uh, you can adjust either one, but at this point I'm going to look at it and say, mm, I need to go back and adjust this one a little bit more. So I'll put it back into the clamp, clean that one up, until I get the tails close to what I want. And then we go back in and I adjust the pins to match the tails. So let me go in and clean this up a little bit. Any questions? Yeah. It was earlier about clamps, and I think it was earlier in the chat about using your, your mm, what are those called? Metal, steel, whatever they are, versus um, using a, a steel a C clamp. No, the the ones I don't. Know. Oh, versus wood. Anyways, I gotta go find that one. But there was one about gouges being sharpened. I thought it was Agent Argent Orange. Okay. Have any videos on sharpening those gouges? Yes, I have a video all dedicated to sharpening gouges. Um, as well as I did a live a while ago where we sharpened a bunch of them. Okay, now here you can see how we're getting kind of close to the fit. Um, it's still a ways out, and I'm running into problems here mostly, um, but I think I'm going to adjust the pins from here on out rather than adjusting the tails. So I'm going to put the pins here in the jaw and start cleaning those. The reason I do the, the, t the pins and not the tails is that it is easier to check the fit in between. So I can bring this board over and put it on here and check and see, adjust some more, put it on there, check and see. Whereas if I'm doing this one, I have to take the whole thing apart to, to check it. I'm going to use that same gouge that I used before and just do it bevel down and clean out some of these. Try and make them fit closer to that line. And this is the one that split out earlier, so it's probably a bit too big. So I'm do that. Come in and clean this out. Check it again. Oh yeah, that's looking a lot better. So I gotta clean out more on this side. So they have some more questions. There's kind of like a general sure. thing going on. That's a good on. time. I'm gonna be going back and forth on this for a while. Um, the strength properties of this compared to other dovetail joints, would you use this in a new furniture project coming up? And uh, kind of what what is the point of the joint? Uh, the original point of the joint is that it was a joint that could be made with power tools. Uh, with a, a router, it is fairly quick and easy to make one of these. And in your regular dovetail jigs that you can get with a router, you can actually get um, adaption bits that fit into this and will do that for you. Um, but 
that's really the only benefit. Oh, well, that's why I'm having problems. Okay. Um, that is, is if you're using power tools, this becomes a really cool joint that you can do very quickly. Um, whereas with hand tools, it is a pain to do. It is, a, it is not intended for hand tools. Um, so the only reason I'm doing this is to show you because I've had a bunch of people asking, and I can't find anywhere on YouTube where someone shows how to make one of these with hand tools. So I figured that would be a good video topic because apparently no one else has done these with hand tools on YouTube. Um, so I will. Um, as to their strength, they are a bit weaker than standard dovetails, but not by a whole lot. Um, really, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly minor amount of difference. Um, but yeah. Would I use these in a furniture build? Probably not because they take two to three times as long to cut by hand than as um, regular dovetails. And so I think I prefer regular dovetails unless there was something where this fit the style of the piece of furniture that this would look really cool with, in which case then I might do it for that. But I don't have any intention of doing this. This is just something I've been wanting to do for a while. And I figured other people would be interested to see it as well. So I think I'm going to try it here again in a moment. Clean this piece out. See how it's fitting. So it's going to be a lot of this little going back and forth. Checking it, cleaning it, checking it, cleaning it. Um, you see here, I don't know if I'm going to move the camera so you can see what I'm talking about. Focus. There we go. On this side, I'm nice and tight to the shoulder here, and I've got a huge gap over here. That means that this bump has to go in further. And if I line up the shoulders on there, what I could actually do is line up the shoulders, grab my pencil, and draw another line on the outside here that shows where the actual R is. R? The actual, actual R? Oh wow, I gotta take off a lot. So now I can come in and gouge out to that line. And I'm probably going to stay away from that line a little ways, check it again, come back in, check it again. Because it's easy to take off more, but it's really hard to add it back for some reason. Any other questions? So apparently this joint can be found on 15th and 16th century furniture in Portugal. I highly doubt that, but I'd be very interested to find out. If you have information, that's send to me. They had more time back then. <laughs> yeah. There are several joints very similar to this. They didn't make videos of it back then. Yeah, yeah. no, they didn't. <laughs> Oh, that's the other thing I have to do. Uh, let me draw my file. The other thing I forgot to do is I need to clean out in between these. Uh, so in between these, I actually have a file with a point on here. And this let me run down in there a little farther. And clean out the joint in between. I'm going to kind of undercut this a little bit, making the back side of it a little bit bigger. Yeah, it's making that fit a little bit better. I'm trying to figure out what I'm running into. Ah, oh, see it there? The camera's in my way of viewing all the time. That's, I found another question. What's that? So, Martin Perez asks, hello from Argentina. What brand of gouge do you use? Um, I use a couple different ones. This one here is a two cherries. I have some from Feffel, File, Pebble. Every German I asked tells me it's pronounced a different way. Um, and the, I think the ones I use more most are two cherries. Um, I find their value is 
phenomenal for their price. Why am I not going back now? Something is stopping it from going back. Is it that piece? Uh, underside of your board? What's that? So is it on the underside of your board? No, it's that one. It's actually on the pins or on the tails board. Oh, there it is. Almost there. This is what really what takes the time is this fitting back and forth. And then we still have to do the pins on top of this. Uh, but thankfully that's a really quick step. Yeah. This is a dovetail joint that actually has pins. Wow, it is still running into something that's keeping it from sliding back. And I don't see it. So that one goes all the way back there. Goes all the way back there. But it won't go all the way back. I'm going to push both sides in. It's not from the glue or anything. No. I don't know. Just throwing ideas out there now. Huh. This is going to be a gappy joint now. I'm just kind of eyeballing things and seeing what we run into. But this is why we do it live, so you can see the reality of things. Because there is no such thing as perfect. Oh! Now I am in. Now I'm not happy. That should go straight back right there, but it's not. It's running into that, and it's running into that. But it's not actually running into those. See, that side fits there. That side doesn't. I am at a total conundrum here. Let me look at this from different angles and see what I see. Left Any questions side. while I'm trying to figure this out? They're all to like, they're like left side, middle pin. <laughs> yeah. They're all coming here. Because it depends on which way. If I look at it here, Looks like I'm rubbing into something here. If I rotate it this way, it looks like I'm rubbing into that over there. But I'm not because that's where it needs to be. And then if I put this on top here, everything looks perfect. It should be able to slide right down here. To that little spot. And as much as it always looks one way on camera, it's never that way in reality. So when you come in in person, Okay, it's being pushed out there. Because it fits perfectly here, and as it comes down, it slowly rotates out this way. So that means something is pushing it. It's backwards. Just flip it over. Huh, let me try that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it may have been. No, it's not backwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're using white oak and walnut, correct? For correct. Your so there we go. Moonshine. Oi, that's going to look bad. Well, no one ever said this joint's going to be perfect. So I think we're going to move on here and show you what the next step is. Because this is going to take me another half an hour of fiddling to get that back in there where it needs to go. Um, so let me show you the clamp up method for this, which is actually um, a bit fun. <laughs> it's going to take me a second to set up. Any questions? No. No questions. Wow. It is a question. No, they're saying I should take a look since I always see it the right way. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to put this on there. Now what I want to actually do is clamp this together as well as clamp this down while I drill the holes for it. Um, and you'll see why in a minute, because once these holes go in, everything is locked in place and you can't move it. And it needs to be perfectly tight. It needs to be clamped tight while it all goes in there. So, move this over. 
Hmm. Let's put another block in there. Oh, I'm having all sorts of issues here. <laughs> now I'm rushing. Okay, so now we can clamp this up. I'll move the camera here a minute so you can get a little better view of what I'm doing. Make sure it doesn't look that bad once it's all clamped up. Uh, oh, before I clamp, I need to add some glue. Because once you put those pins in, there's no way to add glue underneath. Okay. So, so what's I, that? Okay, so they were talking about the dowel. Dang, here we go. Um, are you using a dowel maker to make the pins, Greg Cheng? Nope, I'm just buying pre-made dowels. I just have pre-made dowels. Um, I don't. I want to get a good dowel maker and make my own, but I don't have it. So maybe one of these days. So glues it up sticks it in, and if you ever have gaps, add a little extra glue here and there, helps things go. <laughs> and now we can clamp this in and watch it all squeeze out. And then I'm going to clamp this in, that this is the hold fast. Keep it moving around that way. Keep it from moving on that way, and because this board is splitting, I probably should do one that way as well. <laughs> Let me slide this over. Clamp it that way as well. And now we need to drill holes for the dowel pins to go through. Now, let me give you guys a piece of advice that I always forget. And that is, where is my controller? Hey, there you go. <laughs> um, whenever you are drilling a hole to fit a dowel, else? There they go. whenever you're fitting a hole to fit a dowel, always, 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 always drill a test hole to make sure that your bit fits your dowel. Theoretically, this is a 3 8 dowel, I believe it is, and this is a 3 8 bit. But I have a bunch of 3 8 bits, and they're all slightly different. Some of them would make this loose, and some of them would make it extremely tight. So you want to drill the hole with that specific bit to make sure that the dowel fits exactly how you're looking for it. Always, always, always drill a test hole when you're drilling a hole for a dowel. Um, I, I still run into problems with that. Uh, when I forget to do it, I'm like, oh yeah, it's the right size, right? It didn't work. Oh well. So now we have those holes that we drilled before. We can set the bit in there, and we can drill down three holes. Mm -hmm. that depth, pull it out, do the next one. Any questions? Um, Matthew Bunting asks, since you have the post drill, why not buy a piece of steel and make your own dowel plate? Um, I have dowel plate. It's just a pain to make a single dowel. Um, and I prefer to just use store-bought dowel for that small amount. I'd rather have dowel stock in, 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 sh in the shop rather than um, making a dowel per use. And so I have a whole s bunch of sticks from four foot down to little and a bunch of different woods already. Now the dowel plate is really nice when I want to make something special, like I need a purple heart dowel. Well then I will make a purple heart, purple heart dowel. Um, but for general use uh, I don't like making dowels that much. Now I gotta clean out these holes because I want to get the glue all the way down in them. Um, you know you're on the white out? Yep. Okay. Sure. And I'm gonna do that because I'm switching over here to blow into the holes. One of the best ways to clean out a hole is literally to blow down into the hole with your eyes closed, of Does course. Does it make it a blow hole? Yes. So I'm screw, scratching the, um, the chisel all the way down to the bottom of the hole. And this way I'm kind of breaking up any of those small pieces that might be hanging on at the bottom. I'm going to cover up two of the holes and blow into the other one. It 
eat a lot of walnut. You said you were hungry. There we go. Now I have three holes ready to go. Add a little bit of glue to the hole. Add a little bit of glue to the dowel. And we should be about done. So any questions while I'm doing this? Eight o'clock. Um, no. Quiet night for questions. Normally there's been a whole pile of questions. So if They're you have anything. watching. <laughs> I guess that's a good thing. Oh, the natives are restless. Yeah. The kids are no longer distracted. And I always add some glue to the dowel. It doesn't need much. Just a little bit. And then pound that down in One. Do you wanna, I do cut you these zoom, all ahead of time. Do you want to zoom in now? What's that? You're just really wide angled out. I mean, you're on the other camera, I mean. Oh, I'm still on that one? Oh. Yeah. Well, that would help. Let me do that. <laughs> there we go. That one and this one. When in doubt, more glue is not always better. <laughs> and the last pin. And all these pins are in here. I can take these clamps off, clean out the glue, and flush cut it off, and plane it off. And I actually want to do that tonight to see how bad this joint actually is. Because you can never tell how bad a joint is until you plane it down. So now that those are in there, I can take all these clamps off because this joint is held together completely by um, those pins and the connection. Although I'm probably going to bust it apart when I pull this off because who knows one of those pins might be under a slight bit of tension and snap off a piece of the scrap wood. <laughs> that would be my, my, uh, my lot. And I'm thinking I might actually do a video here soon um, dedicated to this joint and actually go through them um, in one like 10 minute long video. But I always like doing these lines because it gives me a chance to be a little bit more detailed and show some of the little things. Those little things that go wrong that you just can't cover in a 10 minute long video. So I'm going to clean the glue off from around these. And then I'm going to grab a flush cut saw and flush cut them plane it off and take a look at this thing. I'm actually really interested to see how bad this looks. Because <laughs> this was not a good one. My other one, this one was, was actually rather nice. I was happy with how that one came out. So, grab the flush cut saw. Zoom this back up. Yes, the natives are restless. And this one's binding this back. Thin blade. There we go. Now we can plane it down. Get a little bit of glue on the bottom of my plane. That's not a huge issue. I know it's going to bother a few people. I'm sorry. I want to get this done, so I'm just going to dry it off a bit with my hand. Grab a smoothing plane. Let's see what this thing looks like. Oops, sorry. Did Here. you just say sorry to the people? I was saying sorry more to the people watching and suddenly getting jarred. Why are you painting that way? It looks like it would like bend. What's that? It, I just, it looks like it would bend a little bit, plainly. Well, I'm going to slide this down oh. so it's sitting on the bench. Mm -hmm. um, but you always want to plane onto the board because if you plane off the board, you're going to be busting off the fibers out here. Too. Not to mention it's rather dull. Hey, at the moment. We still haven't done the right versus right. Uh, 
No, we haven't done the right versus right target. We need to do that one somewhere here. There we go. Now, let's see how bad does this joint actually look. You guys saw it earlier when it wasn't coming to quite together. Oh, did what do you get think? the lava lamp. There it goes! Oh! Okay. Someone turned on my lava lamp. Who was that? But it's very underwhelming right this second. <laughs> Oh, here we shake it up. There we go. Yay! So, Thanks, Greg. Um, I just want to show this and I'll talk in a moment. But yeah, you can see there were a bunch of gaps in this, but once you actually squeeze it together, clamp it up, they all disappear rather nicely. And I am very happy with how that joint came together. So yeah, there you go. There is the pin and cove or the uh, nap joint. Yes. Um, just a lot of fun. And so who did the super chat? Greg Cheng. Greg, you are my new favorite person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the lava lamp turned on. Unfortunately, you it takes like... You need to get the big bubble lamp. <laughs> yeah. Well, those you have to heat up for a while. So oh. I'm trying to find other things to turn on, but uh, for now, that will do. <laughs> so thank you, Greg. Yeah, there is the... Uh, nap joint, the pin and cove, or the pin and crescent, or there's a, a pile of different names that these go by. Uh, and they are a lot of fun, but I, they're a lot of work. I mean, you can see that. I, um, it was an hour's worth of work to do that with the cameras and all. This one was 38 minutes, and that was just me on my own. Uh, if I were doing a bunch of these, I could probably get them down to around like 25 minutes a piece. Um, but they're, they're not a, a really fast thing. Um, so, yeah. Oh, we got more lava love. Oh, moonshine. moonshine. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I have the best audience on, on uh, YouTube, so thank you for that. Um, and I, I really don't, don't say that um, flippantly because uh, the, the, the comments and things like that, I, a lot of people really complain about the trolls on YouTube, and I rarely get trolls. So thank you. Um, I guess you guys like me. Might get that hobbits. Right? What's that? We might get hobbits. We might get hobbits, yes. There are lots of <laughs> hobbits on our channel, but... Yeah, um, there you go. What, uh, what questions we got? Uh, Other than how do you clean up this mess? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is... Let me show you what this looks like. This is the, the bench. And I'm going to be trying to get an actual GoPro here soon to give you a better overhead shot. Because um, I, I like this overhead shot. I just want to get one without these black bars, top and bottom. But uh, I, I have one that I might be able to pick up here for like 40 bucks. Okay. I think we'll there was a question. Oh, Moonshine asks, how wide is your workbench? Uh, my workbench is 23 inches uh, by 5 foot. I, if I had my preference, I'd like about 25 inches. I think that would be an absolute perfect depth for me for one in the middle of the shop. Um, if it's up against the wall, I need at least 30 inches. Um, so um, I, I like the, the big one. My, my old bench was 24, uh, and I like that. Um, this one was only 25 because I planed off a little bit too much in all the laminations I had. So, oops. But yeah. So now we got Buckeye Storm is giving us some love as well. Woo! More lava love. More lava love. We got lots of videos. Um, so Greg Chen asked, how fast are your regular dovetails to give perspective? Um, if I'm cutting one drawer worth of dovetails, I can usually do a full drawer in a little over an hour. Um, if I'm doing a bunch of them, I can get a drawer down to like 30 minutes. Um, if I'm doing like 10 drawers, I could do all 10 of them in about five hours. Um, so what would that come out to? Like seven minutes of dovetail joint. Um, but if it's just one drawer, uh, because there's a bunch of ways you can do actually gang cutting them. You can cut a bunch of tails together and you can chop them all out together. There's things like that that you can just make the thing, make it a little bit faster. Um, so to perspective, this is about... Uh, three times slower um, so yeah and as to strength um, there really isn't a mechanical function between the two except for that pin and so the strength of the pin is all there it is whereas on a tail um, you have slightly more because there's more compressive strength 
Um, so these aren't quite as strong, but functionally for a drawer, they're as strong as they, they're, they're far stronger than they need to be for a drawer. Um, so if you really want to compare one to the other, um, regular dovetails are stronger, but um, these look cooler. <laughs> cool. What else? Um, and then they're talking about camera options. Oh. I'll let you read those. Yes, my little GoPro up here. I don't uh, know if you guys can see it. Oh, so your mom asked again, is it okay to plane with wet glue? She really wants to know this answer. Sure. Yeah. Um, you can. If, if the glue gets on the bottom of your sole, um, you can clean it off with water. Uh, PVA glue is water soluble. High glue is water soluble. Um, it, but I mean, if you rub it off with your hand like that, it, there, there's nothing on it. If you look at my the plane I have right now, here, this is just planing with the, the glue on there. So you can see it. Um, as you can see, there's there's no glue on there at all. Um, and part of that might be because I, I'm regularly waxing my sole, um, so it's there's nothing for it to stick to. But yeah, doesn't cause a problem. All right. So Sam Weiss has a question. Um, I want to get one of the Cats Moses's dovetail jigs. He makes two different angles, one to six and a one to eight. Is uh -huh. there a reason to get one over the other? <laughs> uh, only if you want to start an argument. <laughs> um, traditionally, hardwood has a one to eight or a one to ten or a one to twelve if you are a purist, uh, whereas softwood is a one to six or steeper dovetail. Um, but that's such a wide, broad thing that do whatever you want. Um, I like a really wide dovetail, and people yell at me for using a, like a one to five in wood and hardwood. Um, but I like the look of it, and it's going to work just as well, no problem. Um, so do what you like. Um, if you like those really wide pan dovetails, then get your one to six. If you like them to look very narrow and and tight looking, then get a one to eight. Um, so, but honestly, between the two, there isn't that much difference. <laughs> but there are a lot of people who argue about that. Cool. What else we got? Because I'm actually going to put a little bit of BLO on these joints and let this um, white oak and walnut pop a bit and show you guys what this looks like. This is always a fun thing. I was going to put it on earlier, but I was like, no, I'll save it for the live video. So here we go. Oops. Oh, I love that. Um, oh, that's happy. See, doesn't that look, joint just look cool? Let's try it on this one that I messed up. And it's a really gappy joint. Let's see what the gappy joint looks like. There you go. And once you put the finish on, you can see there's a bit more gap around this hump and a bit around this hump. But it's better than I was expecting. So, not bad. I'll take it. You can see how bad this piece of wood is. <laughs> Cool. What we got? Anything uh, else? Yeah, hang on. Oh, sorry. There's like three of them. One second. La la la. They keep putting questions up. Um. Was I in camera too, so you guys see the oil? We saw. I thought we. I thought they did. did Not they? close up. No, oh, like we that. Didn't see close up. There you go. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, there's uh, the oil on the joint. Oh, be lucky. Isn't that pretty? I'm happy with that. Okay, hang on. Love what happens when you put BLO on oak and walnut. Oh, uh, scratch. Card Shadrach, who must be new, asked why no mechanical slash electrical tools. Um, they are noisy. Uh, they create dust, and they're not as safe for having the kids in the shop. Also, I must have a much larger shop, um, so I have limited myself to hand tools. And if I wasn't having a YouTube video with hand tools, I would have other power tools. I would have a table saw. I would have a planer. I would have a jointer. Um, but I would have a bigger shop to put them in. <laughs> um, and because I have a hand tool only video channel, I like showing off hand tool only. Um, I do have a few power tools that I pull out from time to time, but they're very limited. Um, so, yeah. Oh, is that any other super chat? Yes. Uh, How do I get the blue there? light to turn on? I don't know. What is the blue light on? Oh, Joy Jacobson. <laughs> Thanks, Joy. I don't know. I have them all on different things, so I don't know which one isn't plugged Oh, I in. think, isn't it 5 through 10 is the lava lamp? Yeah, let me see if it, Oh, yeah, someone turned it on. And I didn't have it plugged in. Sorry about that. Where is it? Where'd it go? Did it turn on? No. I have it turned off. 
that was uh, a lava that... lamp. Let's see. Nope. I thought you had them for different. Yeah, I have them on, on different uh, gratings, but I don't know what they were. Oh, apparently. Oh, that was that one. What is this one? Oh, yeah, there it goes. There it goes. Yay! Because <laughs> I have to actually get the lights up here, but uh, I don't think these ones are plugged in right now. And I'm trying to get other things set up that there's actually a sound that goes off with it, but I haven't found a way of doing that yet, so we'll try. Any other questions before we wrap up? There were a couple. Okay. We got distracted by the super chat. So thank you. But that's okay, Troy. Troy? Um, Tom, 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 something. Tom Brown. Would you have to glue that joint if it, if you were to draw bore the joint? Um, so to draw bore, you would have a pin going through the opposite direction as well. Um, no, no. Um, in all honesty, well, like uh, I have a thing called uh, show tails that I do with the dovetails, where I put the dovetails on wrong, so you can see the dovetail on the front of the drawer. And I love the way that looks, but a lot of people really get worried about that because you could pull the drawer off the front. With the glue on there, I really don't have a problem with it. If I wanted to, I could pin through the tails into the into the pins, and it wouldn't come out. Um, but I, I don't. Um, so yeah, you could put a pin through. Here, let me show you. It would look like uh, something like having a pin going through this side and through the pin and into the other side. Um, that would work perfectly fine. Um, just be another thing, especially if you did like a, a brass pin going through and you shined off the brass on the front so you'd have these brass dots. I think that would look kind of cool. But yeah, give it a try. There is no wrong way, there is no right way as long as you are safe. Um, experiment, have some fun, try something new. That's how I do around here. What else we got? So I was trying to find a comment <laughs> earlier, so I didn't really hear your answer. So were you, would it have been better if you had, did you talk about this, if you had draw board first or, no, was it the pile of <laughs> mm, I can't find it. Okay. <laughs> no, there is no better way to do this than what I did. I actually, um, I have been looking and looking Todd, and looking for resource. Say your question slash statement about the draw board, please, because I can't find the previous comment. Yeah, I've been looking all over the internet to try and find a place that made these with just hand tools. And I have yet to find a place. I'm sure there's someone else out there who's done them with hand tools, uh, but I haven't found it yet. And I can't find it on YouTube. I can't find it on any of the regular sites. I can't find it on any blog. Um, so if anyone has a source where someone else cut these with hand tools, I'd love to hear it. Um, because I'd love to see what other ways other people have done it. This is just the method that I um, fiddle around with and finally got it to work. Uh, so this is what I do, but that's experimentation. There, I'm sure there's like 15 other ways to do it that I just haven't thought about. So yeah, I'd love to see them. Okay, I think going back to the draw bore question, Todd is, even if it was like 1 16th, does that go back to that? Yeah, board? yeah, that's what I was actually talking about. Is if you used like a brass rod, like a 1 16th brass rod to go through there, the brass would be more than strong enough, and then you'd have the finished brass on the outside that would kind of be showing a brass dot. I think that'd be kind of cool. Uh, but to do it with wood, um, yeah, yeah, that would be great because all you're doing, that pin going through there is just stopping this from sliding out. Um, so, yeah, that would probably be perfectly fine, especially if you did something strong like a maple rod or something like that. That would uh, that would work well. But I think the, the brass on the front would actually look pretty cool. And something I might have to experiment with. And then Moonshine asks, instead of dowels, can you just carve out the posts from the tailboard? Um, that's the one I haven't been able to find out how, because you have to get into the thin space in between, um, and because that's that's the way it would normally be done with a power tool, is that um, this dowel here would be of the same material as this, and to the power tool, the router bit would just come through here and clean out all the material in each of these. Um, whereas with a, a hand tool, chiseling out the space in here is extremely difficult, because it's not a straight line. Your chisel always has to be turning around that corner. Yes, you could do it, but the time needed to do that would be incredible. I mean, you'd probably end up taking three to four hours to make each one of these joints. Um, so that's why I, I didn't do it that way. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention when driving into the dowels, if, like, I have oak dowels going into an oak board, so you can see the medullary rays, the thin lines going this way, they go from inside to outside of the tree. 
Um, so if I matched up the rays on the dowels to be going in the same direction as this, you wouldn't be able to tell that they were made of cyclone. Like this one I drove in, this one is perfectly lined up so that the grain is going this way, the medullary rays are going this way. This one is off kilter because the medullary rays are going this way, whereas out here they're going this way. And this one, the rays are going this way, and out here they're going this way. So uh, I, I could have turned these all so that the rays would all be going in the right direction and they would almost, they would look like they're from the same piece of wood as this. Um, but I forgot to do that when driving them in. I was kind of hurrying at that moment. So, yeah. Cool. Anything else or we're going to wrap it up? I think. So you're saying you can do that and it will be live next video. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm actually, I'm liking this um, tricky joinery live and I'm thinking next time we're going to do a hexagonal corner uh, joint. Uh, and I've got a few other fun, um, like three-way piece joints, things like that might, might do. Uh, so we'll be, we'll see what's coming up. So if you have anything you would really like to see me do, uh, let me know. But uh, unless you have anything else, I think that's about it. No, I think you're going to have to read through the chat. I might have missed the question. Cool. Um, if I didn't get your question, go ahead and send me a message, and I'll try and answer it there. So. Oh, okay. Todd just parked it. When the pins slash dowels are placed, use a drawboard technique. I think that's what we were talking about earlier. Okay. I hope we answered it. If not, put Send in the comments message. and James will chat with you. Cool. Well, I think that's about it. So until next time, have a wonderful day.